Good evening, everyone. Welcome to an extra special episode of Lost is Above Replacement. We are recording on a Wednesday night because uh, we are, I don't want to say lazy, but uh, maybe no, lazy. No, we're busy. Ah, we're that's, busy. The, that's, the, that's the word that we're ends We're busy in and dealing with uh, Wi-Fi issues. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a personal problem there, Mac. Shout out Verizon. Skill, uh, skill issue there, Mac. Sorry about yes. that. Uh, cannot condone Verizon. We are not sponsored, by the way. Uh, fellas, it's baseball time. How are you guys doing? I'm always good to, it's always good to be back here on the podcast, and I've been going through a lot of baseball in the last few days here, and uh, man, it's been it's been a whirlwind last uh, week or so in the world of Alex Clark, whether it be for the Boulder Collegians, whether it be for my own personal stuff. It, it's been a lot, and I'm glad to be on podcast again. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm doing all right, I'd say. Uh, it's just really really hot in new york uh and i'm not gonna lie it's, it's kind of tiring uh feels like every time i step outside i'm sweating just because it's blistering uh but yeah you know i'm, I'm just kind of you know hanging around i'm honestly getting excited for the olympics i'll tell you that much the olympics begin next week if you wouldn't believe it oh, wow. uh so i'm really excited for that and then i'm going to japan at the end of the month so yeah you guys are going to be without me for a couple of weeks while i am on the other side of the world uh, but then uh, you'll get me back at some point. But yeah, I'm I'm doing all right. Mac, I'm gonna tell you right now, you've made a horrible, horrible decision not for going to Japan because I want to do that too. But you're leaving Splash and I alone again on podcast. You saw how bad that turned out last time. Yeah, I I know. So I'm I'm a little <laughs> nervous actually. Uh, uh, but we're gonna need to have a we're gonna need to have a stand in. Is uh is David available? That's um, a callback. What about what about what about, what about, wait, what about producer Jack? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I have to, get yeah. Jack in, actually. Yeah, yeah. I, I can yeah, talk producer, to Jack. I'll, I'll yeah, get let producer him know. Jack on. Good yeah. deal. Sounds good deal. We're doing pre-production during the podcast. Yes, yeah. this is great podcasting, by the way. Uh, even better, great. even better podcasting coming up. We have a draft. Uh, believe Woo! it or not, we can actually do oh, these. Yeah. Usually, we do these just confined to the group chat, and we text back and forth, or sometimes we hop on a Discord call. But today, we are doing it live. Uh, the air quotes there. If you're not watching us. Uh, mm -hmm. On YouTube, check out the YouTube page. Um, I do need to update some things. Check out the Twitter. Check out the Instagram uh, at lar underscore baseball for the Twitter and the Instagram. Um, but we have a draft today, and we have an extra special draft. We are drafting our all-time home run derby participants. And this... to be clear, this is not just like players who've been in the derby. This is like if we were making a hypothetical home run derby of all players ever. Mm -hmm. this would be like who we would most want to be in the derby. And I'll Correct. also say this. I definitely think that participating in the home run derby definitely gives you a little bit of an edge just because you've done it mm -hmm. before. Um, yeah. I do have one question for you, Splash. We didn't talk about this earlier, and I apologize sure. for that. Uh, what format are we using with the derby? Uh, we are going – I guess we're just going to use the standard uh, – Are we going to use what we outs, this year. or are we going to use the timer? We're going to use the combination out and timer that we had in the 2024 home run derby. I can't give any thoughts on that. I did not watch it. I good, did. Good job, Teoscar Hernandez. I watched spoiler it. Spoiler alert. Uh, good, good job, Pete Alonso. Spoiler alert. He didn't do all that well. No, Alec no, Bohm, you are poorly. a fraud. Uh, Alec right. Bohm, like somehow with only like 21 i think yeah. finished with the highest total in the first it round. felt oh uh, he was tied with jose ramirez oh yeah he's oh, tied okay. with jay right yeah you're right you're right okay so anyways today we are each picking four players we will go in a uh snake format we will pick four players each for our all-time home run derby no repeats standard draft rules um uh Home run derby experience is not a prerequisite. You can choose players who played before 1985, the first year of the derby. You can you can choose players who active players who have never been in the derby. If you want to choose Madison Bumgarner, you are more than welcome to do that. I remember the days. I I wanted Mad Bum in the home run derby. Yeah, no, I I get you on that. Yeah, hundred percent. Also, uh, me thinks, especially with uh, Shohei Otani as a pitcher next year, uh, me thinks we should have a one through nine. One pitcher, one catcher, one first base, so on and so forth. Maybe make it 10 and you have a DH in there, uh, like a Ozuna Schwarber type. Um, that's that's fair, but at the same time, 
I think my problem with that overall is just that um, now you're guaranteeing some people are going to be in and some people are going to be left out because there's a lot of, say, power hitting first baseman, but not a lot of outfielders, not as many power hitting second baseman. And you're going to be only that's a tough part. Yeah, just one. I think. Okay, hear me out before we get into the draft speed round Otani, Cal, uh, Alonzo, Ozzy. It's in Atlanta, so relax. Okay, I'm, I'm, um, I'm following. Uh, Isak Paredes, any of the shortstops, there's like 17 of them that have, well, I would give like B. Ellie, Ellie de la Cruz in Ellie the home run derby. Uh, your outfield, I know Judge isn't going to do it, Soto's not going to do it. So that makes it more difficult. We don't care so much about who will and who. That's a good be. point, but I'm trying to have a more realistic outfield. That's fair. Uh, Schwarber DH, uh, then your outfield. Um, uh, we'll go with Tyler O'Neill. Uh, we will go with uh, Jack Suwinski, and we will go with. Uh, we have the Dodgers covered. Uh, we will go with Fernando Tatis Jr. So there it I is. Mean, that that that's my home run derby lineup. We have Otani, Cal, Alonzo, Ozzy, Paredes, Ellie De La Cruz. Uh, I've totally blanked on the left. Oh, uh, Tyler O'Neill, Jack Sawinski, and Fernando Tatis. I think Jr. I think you lost me on O'Neill and Sawinski, but other than that, I think they both Tyler have a lot O'Neal. of raw power. They yes, got a lot of raw power. That's, that's fine. the point. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, or we could have several Oakland A's because they are the gods of home runs now, apparently. Yeah, Mason yeah. Miller in the home run derby. Let's go, boys. Yeah, <laughs> Mason Miller. Um, honestly, I, so I'm curious about – throws the ball harder yeah. than, a, than the exit velocity needed for some home runs. is hilarious. Yes. Uh, I, if you yeah, compared yeah. him to Isak Paredes, like max exit velo, the difference is like one mile per hour. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see, though, how we do – as we get into this draft, whether – uh, each of us go for guys with just big raw power or just the results, like the home runs are mm-hmm. there could, or, you know, so frankly, I, people were making this argument last year with Mookie that if it goes over the fence, it counts the same. Yep, right. It's true. Yeah. So um, Marcelo Zuna had the longest home run the other night. He did not advance out of the first round. No, he did not. Although I will say there is an advantage to hitting longer home runs because you get like the bonus out. The yes, the it, bonus outs are true, but if you just hit home runs to begin with, you don't need the bonus outs. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm aware with you, but no, right. I'm just saying that 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 could factor in. That's yeah. true. What could else? What else could factor in is Alex's order. He has randomized it. He has gone through the trials and tribulations of randomizing an A, B, and C situation. I know it took a long time. Yep. It took a lot of computing power laid on us. I mean, it actually did take a while because they randomized the list 15 times. That was the number that Matt gave me, by the way. Ah, okay, so, great. I will now be looking and revealing the list. Drafting first is me. Mac is second, Splash yeah. is last. What a shocker. No, legit, like that is, I'm not. And we're doing this, we're doing this snake draft, correct? Yes. Yes, it's snake draft. All right, sounds good. So, sorry, for the YouTube, All right. uh, like for the non-YouTube audience, I just showed my phone screen that showed it. Um, All right, Alex, Mac, you're on the clock. I'm just going to test that as soon as like I finished that, I just went boop, boop, and put it down and did not look at it again. Okay. All right, so I'm going to be going first here, and I don't care if this is homerism. He is one of the, of the best home run derby participants of all time. I'm taking Ken Griffey Jr. Griffey, his swing yeah, is that makes sense. Pretends to be the, shocked. Yeah. No, the absolute good when it comes to a home run derby format just hits bomb after bomb after bomb. Arguably one of the most famous home runs hit during a home run derby with one that went off the warehouse in Baltimore. This is true. Baltimore. Yep. All right. That's Mac. my first pick. Ooh. Mac, you're on. Uh, okay. You know, I'm going to go with one. I, you know, this guy probably could have been the all-time home run king if it weren't for the ballpark he played in. I'm going with Willie Mays. That's, uh, a good, that's if, a you, really if good we if we put him like I hypothetically like next year's uh, next year it's in Atlanta. Like I think if Willie Mays did a home run derby in Atlanta, like he would he would hit that so many home insane. runs. Yeah. That's the thing is that a lot of his home runs got knocked down at Candlestick Park. So uh, yeah, I think I think Willie Mays would ball out in the home run derby. 100% agree. Okay. Rip Jacoby oh. Jones. Rest in peace, by the way. Um, 
I get back-to-back picks here. My first pick is the obvious pick. Babe Ruth in a home run derby. Are you serious, folks? That, that, that was. Oh, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. So, so that's just the easy pick. Round two. This is a pick that I, I don't exactly know if will be the most popular pick, but I will take it now. When you talk about showmanship, that's what the derby is about. You want the big personalities. You want the big boppers. You want the guy who has control of the moment. Give me Mr. October Reggie Jackson. Though I, I respect it. I respect yeah. it. Yeah. That's a good pick. That's a very good pick. All right. I'm next up, and I'm I'm going with one that might be – I don't know if I'd say controversial, but I it's one that might catch people off guard. I am going with Ichiro. You now, know what? That's fair. I, I honestly thought about him as a late sleeper. I'm surprised Alex didn't take him in the fourth So, round. yeah. So <laughs> each, my, my thing with Ichiro is, yes, he only had 143 home runs in the majors, and he did. He only slugged like a little over 400 for his career, but when he needed to hit for power, he could hit for power. And I always 100%. say that yeah. the best that round of batting practice I have ever seen was 39-year-old Ichiro stepping in at City Field and just hitting like – a, like five frozen ropes into the second deck. So if he wants it for power, like oh, yeah. by all means, this guy could have hit 500 home runs if he wanted to. So I think in a home run derby, he, he could win the thing. I completely hundred percent agree. With you. All right, Alex. All right. My last pick of the second round here. I'm going to go with the true home run King in Henry Hank Aaron. I think that again, you want to talk about showmanship. You want to talk about guys that have been, one of the greatest, like, their home runs have been absolutely momentous. Hank Aaron's is right up there on top of the list. All right, fair pick. So through two rounds, Alex has Ken Griffey Jr. and Hank Aaron. Mac has Willie Mays and Ichiro Suzuki and Splash. That's me, Babe Ruth, Reggie Jackson. Alex, right. you begin round three. I begin round three, and I'm going to bring it modern. Here, I'm going to go with a guy that is probably one of the most pure power hitters on the planet, in my opinion. I'm going with one Arson Judge. Judge, oh, I wow. think, as a hitter and as a power hitter, is the ball does not even have to be hit that hard off of his bat for it to leave. He just has that much pure strength to him. That's, I wanted to get at least one modern name on here. There was another name I was thinking about, but I think that Judge just makes it per- makes perfect sense for my team. Ma- I, right. Now I also ah. have three outfielders. I have Judge in le- left. I have Griffey in center, and I have uh, uh, Aaron in right. All right. Well, I guess I'll follow suit with uh, Alex and pick Judge's teammate, uh, Giancarlo Stanton, another guy Ooh. who has won a home run derby. Uh, okay. He's the active home run leaders. Uh it's funny because you look at this year and he only – his average home run distance is just 415 feet, which for him that's like hitting a wall scraper every time. <laughs> and his max is only 449. Like, come on. What are you talking about? But anyway, he's also one of two players to hit a ball 120 miles per hour this year. Uh, so, And I, I saw this guy hit three home runs in a spring training game. So, well, actually, I was getting food when he hit his third home run of the game. <laughs> but – uh this when he makes contact the ball just goes flying uh i know that he doesn't stay he can't really stay healthy anymore uh but i mean the the one the one thing he's good for right now is still is hitting home runs so i think he's already got one derby title i mean i'm surprised he's only one one to be honest that's fair all All right right. with my third pick i'm going to go to the old well with a righty Perhaps the greatest power hitter to ever live, Josh Gibson, is in my home run derby. You know what? That is a fantastic show. That's a great pick. Good, good on you. Good on you. Right yeah, in round one. four. To this... uh, kind of get, I want to say one thing before oh, you do sure. that. Uh, again, if you have not played the MLB the show like storylines on the Negro Leagues and Josh Gibson specifically, they talked about how his like the when it, the ball hit his bat specifically it sounded so much different than anybody else hitting the ball to the fact where actually i will be the show did did a play on this where every hit you got with him had the perfect perfect sound even if uh it was a little dribbler and i think that's i love that 
Yes. We we love our slugging king, Josh Gibson. Yes, sir. So my right. last pick here. Round, yeah. I'm torn. There's, there's a lot of great names available. There are. There is a ton. There's a lot of great names available. Uh, I'm going to give some honorable mentions. Well, Ted Williams. Actually, I was about to say, maybe wait on the honorable mentions. Oh, no. After we're done with all the picks. Fair, but okay. Uh, pretend uh, Wed Tilliams is not a real player. So uh, <laughs> you got Dang. faked out there. My fourth pick, I'm going to go a little off the beaten path here. A player lauded for his ability to hit long home runs. A player who was a menace in the box. A player who, in a lot of ways, is the precursor to Aaron Judge. Just not playing in New York. He was playing in Washington with the Senators. That is the capital punisher, Frank Howard. Yep. No, I get that. that oh, that's Frank a Howard's great point. pick. That's a great show. All right, Max, oh, your man. last pick. Uh I'm honest, so I'm going to go with the guy. I'm honestly surprised he's on the board because this is another guy who, I mean, allegedly may have hit the longest home run in history. We don't really have uh, data to track it. I'm going with Mickey Mantle. Yeah, this guy, a go. switch hitter too. Uh, and is he going to do mean, the Adley Rushman spot? Where? Yeah, you know, I mean, honestly, I would love to. I would Derby. love for that to happen, but. Yeah, no. Again, I was there Mickey live Mantle. for that, and when he switched batting, like from Dude. righty to lefty, yeah, it was insane. Like the entire place loved, and of course, first swing homers. Yeah, he's yeah. a local t- kid too. He is a local kid. Yeah, yeah. well, he I mean, for, yeah, uh, Oregon State, I believe. Well, relatively yeah. local. Yeah, well. Mickey Mantle, though, apparently, I think, yeah, there, there's a ball that he hit supposedly that went like 500 maybe 600 feet or something like, you know, it's mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, Alex, wrap My us up pick here. Uh, I'm going to be taking uh, one uh, Terry from MLB power pros, 2008. Uh, no. Um, yes. So I've had a number of names going through my head too. And I've finally settled on one because when this dude was producing, he was arguably the best hitter on the planet, the most effective hitter on the planet, whether it was home runs, whether it was getting on base, even played a little bit of good defense too. But as a power threat, it was impossible to deny how good he was. And that was one Albert Pujols. Ooh. Pujols Member of the 700 was, home run club. Exactly. So you're going to go with the true number. He's also been in some homer derbies. Like, so, you know what? He's he got the experience. No, Pujols, one of the most fun hitters of all time. Oh, yeah. The strongest mm-hmm. hitters of all time. So. All right. I'll, I will uh, recap here. Alex takes Ken Griffey Jr., Hank Aaron, Aaron Judge, Albert Pujols. Mac takes Willie Mays, Ichiro Suzuki, Giancarlo Stanton, Mickey Mantle. Splash takes Babe Ruth, Reggie Jackson, Josh Gibson, and Frank Howard. So, before... You guys defend any of your picks before we give any honorable mentions. Make sure you hit us up at LAR underscore baseball on Twitter. Let us know who had the best draft. Which one of us? Do you do you think we snubbed anyone? We'll talk about honorable mentions here in a minute. Do you think Alex ran away with it? Mac ran away with it? Splash ran away with it? Oh yeah. Let us know what you think. Who would win out of the out of the teams, groups of players, who would win? And out of the 12 players. Who would stand who above? Would who yeah. would win the all-time home run derby? I and just from how I'm thinking of it, right? If like people have more history to them, they may go with splashes. But splash, you had a lot of older picks that honestly, I respect. I respect all the names that you brought up. Mac and I went a little bit more, a little bit more uh, modern, slightly but, more modern, yeah. But definitely, have also had our own, you know, historical picks. I think all of us, like any derby that has these 12 names in it together, all in their prime, would be like pay-per-view. Like you would have yes. to pay just to watch it one time. And then if you ever want to see it again, nope, God, do it one more time. And you'd be doing it hand over fist. I'm surprised. A mm-hmm. certain player hit 762 home runs. Yeah. 73 in a season. I was about to bring that up. He's not yeah. on the list. Yeah. Uh, also, no Ted Williams. Yeah. Um. Uh, no Sammy Sosa, no Mark McGuire. I will be honest. I was teetering on the brink of taking Mark McGuire. I did want to I let these two righties. Another name yeah. that went through my mind here at the end of there was Alex Rodriguez. 
too was yeah. Air Rod's not a part of it. No um, Jim Tomey. No, no Tomey. Frank Thomas. No, no, no Ott. <laughs> uh, Adam Dunn. He was on my short list. Yeah, that's fair. Like honestly, and I think that just really goes to show like how many like prolific power hitters have been through all of history. And mm. Ralph Kiner, seven home yeah, run titles. Yeah, Ralph Kiner. I still think the uh, the oddest pick overall is still Mac with Ichiro. But and let me say this though, before anyone says anything, I understand and I. We are get all it. Ichiro and stands here. We are all Ichiro stands here, but, uh, except uh, maybe Splash. You're a little angry at Ichiro after. Uh, okay, not we're not going to talk about that. Know. That is a different part of losses above replacement. and that's a story <laughs> for another time. So, anyways, yeah, that's, that's from uh, Curb with some rise. <laughs> Yes. Uh, let us know on LAR underscore baseball, the Twitter account. Let us know who won the draft. Who would win in a hypothetical? Who would you take? Who would your first pick have been? Would you have taken Griffey? Would you have taken a different player who would start in the home run derby? I'm actually surprised Mac didn't take Pete Alonso. Um, that was the only one I was thinking of. Was Alonso. You know, uh, Pete Alonso won his first two home run derbies, but my, I mean, he got obliterated by Julio Rodriguez two derbies in a row. And then this year, I mean, what was the even point of what, what was the point of going to the Derby this year? I mean, uh, I mean, robbing Christian honest, Walker and Francisco Lindor I, of all-star spots. I, you know, I'm, I, I'm someone who defends Pete Alonso a lot, but that made zero sense to me. I, it, you know, to me, uh, because once Alec, like with all due respect to Alec Bohm, uh, when I saw that Alec Bohm was the second participant named to the home run Derby, I had no <laughs> doubt in my mind that, they were going to find some way to get Alonzo in it because honestly, I thought after last year he was going to take a break, but mm-hmm. uh, I, oh, you sorry. know, judge o- Otani Soto had all turned down their invites and Stanton was hurt. So I mean, like, was hurt. Kinda, he was in it last year. Acuna was hurt. Is hurt. Yeah, exactly. These guys like to because hurt. of all that, like they probably needed Alonzo to be in it. Like, well, then that may have been, but uh, fun if we wanted to do this like again idea again is we have to put one like rookie in hmm. or one like player hmm. that only has like less than two years. Of Reese season. Hines, anyone? <laughs> Reese Hines is kind of nasty, right? Yeah. Now. yeah. Uh, hey, I'm with you on that. Mason uh, Barrel said he had 90 grade power. <laughs> another, because uh, another name I had thought about and not purely, not because he's done anything, just purely what the power metrics say was O'Neill Cruz. Dude hmm. I thought ball, about like him too. Yeah. Sniper rifle. Like, geez, that thing just explodes. Uh, what about uh, Glenn Allen Hill? Yeah, I thought about Glenn yeah. Allen Hill. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was really, it, it was just, it, it's tough to narrow it down to just four. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there's, there's a number of guys who I like. I mean, like, McGuire was definitely one I considered. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, he hit a ball 538 feet. You know, he's, Omar it, it, it's about it. I mean, Mazzara, yeah. Maz- uh, I yeah. was thinking about Joey Gallo, honestly, a little mm-hmm. bit. Dude, you can't, how can you not have the true power hitter in Juan Uribe? Or oh, Juan I love Pierre. Juan Uribe. So, like, yeah. yeah. Juan Pierre, yeah. Now, I will add the Pierre. caveat. He hit just one. I will add the caveat. Uh, if we were assuming this is at Truist Park in the 2025 All-Star game, uh, their correct answer is probably Bryce Harper. Uh, but yeah, I thought about that. Yeah. The dude just hits homers as a hobby at this point. Uh, so that is that is all on the Bryce Harper uh, discussion. Um, home run derby. Congratulations to Oscar Hernandez. Beat Bobby Witt Jr. in the final. Witt came Four just there. short of tying the game. Um, so fun times there. Former Astro as well. Uh, so got to respect the Astros. Uh, All-Star game itself. We had a Tungsten Armo Doyle performance by Shohei Otani. He had every National League RBI, every National League walk, and the National League lost 5-3 to three, thanks to a Jaron Duran <laughs> uh, home run. Shout yeah, out Jared to Nick nice. on Twitter, by the way. Nice, yeah. He had a, a ticket with Duran at 45-1 to one to win MVP, and he won MVP, which is unbelievable. So they win 5-3, Duran with a two-run homer. Otani had a three-run homer, also drew a walk. Um, the uh, best part of it was having all of the players, AL and NL, uh, in the uh, uh, on the score on the scorecard. So it's like took up my entire phone when I took a screenshot and posted it on Twitter. So uh, oh, nice. we love that. Uh, Ronaldo okay. Lopez scoreless outing. Christopher Sanchez got two outs on two pitches. Uh, so congratulations, the American League. You will not be hosting Game Seven of the World Series unless your team deserves it, based on merit. So. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I will say this as well. Uh, there was no Mariner representation. Well, some people say there was no Mariner representation at the game. That is not true. Yes, Gilbert did not pitch. Yes, Munoz did not pitch. But you know what did make an appearance? Hot dogs from heaven, baby. The oh, yeah. That was amazing to see. Just And they had, hey, they had the Mariner Moose out with it, too. So it was Mariner representation at the All-Star game. Oh, my days. <laughs> Even playing, I was like, uh, ooh, baby, do you know what that was? That was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> beautiful. All right. So beautiful. good performance yeah. there. Mason Miller got the dub. Hunter Green got the loss. Emmanuel Classe got the miles save. an hour? Yeah, that, oh, that was. Pitches? We were robbed, honestly, of a Harper Miller matchup. Oh my gosh, yes. Please. But that oh, was crazy. Okay. Yeah. On my soapbox, Mason Miller made Shohei Otani look like a little child in the back yes. of the box. Agreed. That yeah. was. That was nasty. <laughs> yeah. That slider, bro. That was. Oh insane. my goodness. I, what do we think of Skeen starting? I, I don't think I, we I, had I a. I was okay with that. I, I was said, on okay. board with it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Considering that it's basically just like a fan event at this point, like the who the fans want to see the most, they want to see skeins. So, sure. Okay. Because I, I, as like a Braves fan and a, a Chris Sale truther this year, I was hoping it would be Sale, but then they moved his start to Tuesday and Sunday. So, obviously, it wasn't going to be Sale. So, it's fine. Yeah. I get it. I would have had skeins pitch the third and Sale pitch the first, but that's okay. Anyways, let's move on to our second topic, which ironically enough, is about another kind of second, the second half, or if you're the Padres, the final 38% of your season, because they've already played 99 games. Why MLB? Nonsense. Anyways. Oh, that's, that's, oof. Yeah, that's great. Every team has played like at least 96 games. It is, it's wild. Um, not the record that came in, that came back in the seventies, but today's topic, second half breakouts. I hope we all prepared one or two. Yep, I got I got I got a couple. Okay, Alex, big man. Mm -hmm. Tell us who your number uh who your okay. second half breakout will be. I'll do my first one. Easy. And it's one that needs to break out. Is it a number half. 44 for the Seattle Mariners? It is number 44 for the Seattle Mariners. Legitimately, looking at what Julio has done this year has been disappointing. He fielding wise has been fantastic. Do not get me wrong. Him as a fielder has been amazing to watch, but Hitting wise, along with the entire team, has just been bad, and it's been very un Julio like. However, what has been kind of like Julio is that the first half he struggles a bit, usually the first month or so. This time it really extended out and it needs to stop very much now. But the dude has shown that he can play at that elite level, and even when he's not getting hits, well, he's still hitting the ball hard. The biggest issue that he has right now is he's striking out a lot, just be undisciplined at the plate. You clear that up. You just focus on swinging at pitches you know you can hit. You are going to have a monster second season and hopefully lead Seattle back to the playoffs and the first division win since 2001. But again, this off the entire Mariner offense needs to wake up. The fact that you have a you have a team lower batting average than the Chicago White Sox is absolutely painful to watch. Like, it's not like good. It. It's not. It can't. There's no way how you can even say that it's good at this point. But no, like the team is winning 100% because of their pitching. Like their pitching is just un otherworldly. But if anyone needs to heat up, it's Julio. Everyone gets better around Julio as well. So if he gets better, he's a spark plug for the team keep that going you have other guys that are doing decently well around him just julio you heat up it's gonna be good all right mac hit us with your breakout candidate uh i'm going to go with o'neill cruz uh some of the you know the pirates are actually at 500 as of right now uh so good on them granted their last three games were against the white Sox. so uh but any anyways uh i think cruz He's off to a solid start with an 855 OPS in July. Uh, he had an 820 OPS in May. Heck, he's been solid ever since May 1st. He's had a really rocky April where he struck out 45 times in 121 plate appearances. Uh, I think his plate discipline, has, it's obviously still not great, but it's 
slightly improved, I think. Uh, and he's still tearing the cover off the ball. Uh, and this is the first time we're seeing him over the course of a full season in the majors. So I think the second half, I think he's going to continue to make adjustments. He's going to continue tearing the cover off the ball. I think we'll start seeing uh, more of that potential that we know he has. So I think he's going to have a big second half. And I think if the Pirates are going to try to contend, and maybe there'll be buyers at the deadline. I don't know if that's actually likely, but I think Cruz is going to have a great second half and we're going to see him finish the year with about 30 homes. Right. I like it. I, I like I, it. I respect the pick. Yeah. It's about whether or not he hits the ball hard enough. Can you just get a little bit of lift under it when he does? This is true. He, I still can't believe I actually watched the game that he broke the stat cast record for hardest hit ball. That is unreal. That ball was an absolute missile nuke. Yeah. Was it, it wasn't even like not even a homer. Was it yeah, it was a single. No, it banged, banged off the right field wall. Yeah, but it all went so fast, even with his speed, he couldn't make it to second on the right. ball was already fielded. All right, so my breakout pick is, you guys know him. You guys, I actually don't know if you like him or love him. Uh, I will point out that this is a bit of a stand-in for the teams pitching as, at large, and this is one of the teams that your uh, general manager, your pobo, can come out and say, we don't really need to add people to the deadline. We are confident. We, we are making internal additions here. We're getting players back from the Amer- of the injured list. We're getting players back who have struggled. That's why my breakout pick is <laughs> reigning Cy Young Award winner Blake Snell. He's 0-3 with an ERA well above 6 right now, but the underlying metrics look a lot better. He's a 3.78 FIP. I trust that the hits per 9 is going to go down. It's at 8.6 this year which is the highest since his first season. Um, he's a guy that still strikes out a lot of guys. His walk rate is actually down from what it was in San Diego, and I think it could trend down a little bit more uh, as we proceed through the season and San Francisco's rotation begins to take shape. You know you have Logan Webb up top, but they're, the Giants are getting a lot of reinforcements back. Remember Robbie Ray, old friend of Alex's? He's coming back. I think the Giants are going to be poised to make a, a little bit of a run here. I don't necessarily know if they're going to make a playoff, make the playoffs, but I think Blake Snell is going to pitch a lot better, and he's going to look more like the Cy Young Award winner we know and love, as opposed to a guy with a six ERA. How dare you make me remember Robbie Ray in the year of our Lord, twenty twenty four? Jordan Alvarez. I'm surprised you didn't mute me for that one. I'm about ready to. All right, Alex, do you have a pitcher breakout or do you have another hitter breakout? So that's what I wanted to go pitcher here, but okay, I'm going to keep it to Seattle because I want to, but because this is another pitcher that is coming off of the IL here and has had a lot of stuff on him here, a lot of hype built up around him. And that's Gregory Santos. Gregory Santos is oh, a guy yep. that has a cannon of an arm his sinker is insane his slider is great fastball is great here the thing right now is that okay we didn't see him at all the first half he didn't he was there he was hurt this is a bullpen right now that really needs another anchor to it that really needs just another name that can reliably eat innings and be a decent setup man and if santos does what he is hyped up to do and what his fastball has shown that he can do then you're going to be fantastic. I'm now if Seattle can add one more bullpen piece of that, you're going to look great. But no, Santos is a guy that legitimately, when he is on, he is unhittable. He has a fastball that has life to it, a slider that just zips, uh, that just zips inside. Like, I mean, come on, that's he's a great pitcher, but you're worried about you know injuries, you're worried about control with him, and he didn't play at all in the first half. He played a couple games. At most. So second half breakout for him. He's going to come out and show why Seattle really won that deal. All right. I like it. Mac, yeah. do you have a pitcher or do you uh, have a hitter? Uh, I do have a pitcher, uh, and I am going with Nick Pavetta from the Boston Red Sox. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't know. I'm riding the high with Andrew Bailey, seeing what he's done with Tanner Houck this year, and really what he's done with that entire Red Sox pitching staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pavetta, yeah, so he has a 4.18 DRA, but uh, 3.74 expected RA, 3.86 FIP, 3.45 expected FIP. Uh, his strikeouts are slightly down, but he's still uh, averaging 10.5 strikeouts per nine against only 2.3 walks per nine, which is the lowest mark of his career. 
Uh, he still gives up home runs, yes, but uh, career best strikeout to walk ratio of 4.40. Uh, and he's he's pitched well in general. Uh, I know he dealt with some injuries, but I, I really look forward to see what Nick Pavetta can do in the second half. I think the Red Sox are in a great spot uh, to contend for the playoffs. And I think with Hauk and Pavetta, and I'm sure they're going to make a move at the deadline, I think the Sox probably snag that final wild card spot. Yeah, on the, on no, the show I you weren't here, I, I shouted the Red Sox as the team I was most excited to see in the second half. So absolutely could see it. Andrew Bailey, president, by the way. Uh, so my second breakout pick, I was really thinking about Spencer Schwellenbach. I talked about him two episodes ago, or I guess the yeah, last episode. I just don't know if Atlanta's going to let him through the innings. This is sort of the, um, like the Luis Heal problem, the Garrett Crochet problem the Renato Lopez problem, Jordan Hicks, like how far are you willing to stretch these guys out that either haven't been stretched out to that length before, or it's been a while for like Raylo. But my pick, my second player, Austin Wells, catcher for the Yankees. He's been very good defensively, plus five framing runs, plus three blocking runs, overall plus five fielding run value. And he hits the ball hard. He has a good sweet spot percentage, 36%. Expected Woba 337, a lot better than his actual Woba. And I think he's a player that the Yankees desperately need that third guy after Judge and Soto. They have Judge and Soto. You have two of the top, I don't know, five players in baseball. Fabulous. Who's your third guy? Right now it's Ben Rice. It might be Gleyber Torres. Giancarlo stands on the IL. Hopefully he returns soon. DJ LeMahieu, king of the ground ball derby. Probably not the move. Anthony Volpe needs to figure something out. Trent Grisham is a solid player. Alex Verdugo is just your dead on average player. I think Austin Wells could be the difference between the Yankees winning the American league East and slipping to third in the division. And they're probably going to make the playoffs. I, I think that's a, that's a given at this point, but if you're the Yankees and you are the, there's big vibes difference. If you're finishing first in the entire American league ahead of Baltimore, ahead of Boston, ahead of Cleveland, ahead of Seattle, ahead of everyone. And then finishing fifth, and having to go to Houston or having to go to Boston or having to go to, you know, Minnesota. Well, they're, they own the twins. So maybe not Minnesota, but going to Texas, right? That's a difficult ask for a Yankee team that the last handful of years has underperformed in the playoffs. Austin Wells needs to have a big second half. I think he will. I like the underlying metrics and he has a good enough defensive floor that even if he has some more bad batted ball luck that he's had so far, I think he's good to go. Yeah, yeah I, actually, I, I I think Wells uh, should be there every day, especially with the way Trevino has struggled defensively this year. Like, mm -hmm. I see no Very reason weird. for the Yankees to not give uh, Wells at bats regularly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, out, yeah. spe especially with the strides he's taken offensively, like having a strong offensive catcher who also handles the pitching staff well, it's it's really it's a big game changer. I mean, the Mets oh. struggled. Well, yeah, Cal Raleigh for the Mariners, <laughs> obviously, but also the Mets struggled badly while Francisco mm -hmm. Alvarez was out, and it's like a completely different game. I say it's like what uh, for comparison to another sport, uh, OG Ananobi, uh, the Knicks were like unbeatable when he was on the court. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he, Francisco Alvarez, even if he takes like an over four with three strikeouts, he makes a difference. In the game. Like just yeah. ha having him behind the plate. It's amazing yep. to see. What like even in a team sport like baseball, how much one guy can really change an entire dynamic and especially for catchers, right? Catch in my personal opinion, catcher is the most important position on the baseball field because they work mm -hmm. with the off. They work with the pitchers overall. They have to make sure that they know every single one of the pitchers and how to work each of the hitters. Kind of, they're the only position that plays offense as well as have is such a huge mark on the defense, including in attacking the other offense here. And you are worked like hell with being having to squat for nine innings plus. You've got to mm -hmm. have good defense and are still expected to be a hitter. So, yeah, no, catcher 100% is the most important position in the game. Yeah, if I'm giving the Yankees some advice, just some armchair manager here, I, I think Wells should be your starter every day against righties and Trevino can start against lefties. Yeah. And 
if you have a, a run of one or the other, then you can obviously mix it up. But, you know, Wells from the left side, I think that's an important bat to have in, especially at Yankee Stadium. But, you know, it's important. And there's a there's a rhythm to catching, I think. There's a reason why JT Ariel Muto, Cal Raleigh, Oakland Sean Murphy were really, really good. And they were Salvador Perez, really, really good. And they play a lot. They're playing, you know, five or six times a week. Yeah, they'll have the occasional DH day if applicable. They'll have the occasional off day, maybe a pinch hit appearance. The Braves like doing that with Murphy. But there needs to be some rhythm. And I you can't have the same rhythm that like a first baseman has, right? It's it's yeah. illogical for to ask Murphy to play as often as Olsen or Will Smith to play as often as Freddie Freeman. Yeah. Fine. But you know, I, I think it's important that Adley Rutschman's in the lineup for Baltimore just about every game. Maybe you give him an off day uh, against his uh, the platoon split that he struggles with. I, I'm I'm blanking on what his platoon splits are, but regardless, I know that they, maybe, they have maybe give him an off lot. day here or there. Or you you have James McCann for a reason. He or still yes, you have a backup catcher yeah. for a reason, right? The Phillies have Garrett Stubbs, who's not very good at baseball. Sorry, but they have Garrett Stubbs for a reason, you know. But you need to play your catcher more often, especially now as we get to the second half. These games are really important. You need to lock up playoff seating for the Yankees, try to win the division. You know, if you're the Braves, try to keep the fourth spot. Um, if you're these other teams that are Cal Raleigh is going to play every day for the Mariners. That's huge. So I will say kind of backing up and going away from your point a little bit, a little bit, half and half. I definitely agree that especially for a catcher, a pattern is very key to have, but I also think that playing the matchups and having two catchers that are decent defensively, but can go against either side, uh, one against one side of the plate, one against the other side of the plate can really work a lot of wonders in I think it was in 2022, right? You had Cal Raleigh, who, as a lefty hitter, absolute masher. Like, he mm-hmm. was a menace against righty pitchers. Against lefties, struggled. But that's when you put in Tom Murphy to mm-hmm. pin, decide to catch. And he was, again, not as good defensively as Cal, but he still did enough to work mm-hmm. through, and he absolutely mashed against lefties. And they had one of the best catching tandems in baseball that year. Like... So at that point, like, I definitely like the idea of having that rhythm as well because it really can make a difference. Mm -hmm. But I also see a value in having two decent catchers on the team that one is for one job and one is for the other. Yeah, or if you have a particular pitcher that likes a particular catcher, that's fine. Um, We've kind of gone away from that a little bit more. That was really big during the number. True. Yeah. So, but no, I I completely understand. No, Hunter, you're harm center, right? Yeah, I, like I think I in a perfect that, world, yeah. if you have one of the stud catchers, the Smiths, the Rutschmans, the, in theory, Sean Murphy, I don't know what's mm-hmm. happening, but in theory, I think that guy should play out of six games, should probably start four of them, maybe DH a fifth one or a, a pinch hitter in the fifth one. So you're, he's playing two thirds of the time plus three fifths mm-hmm. of the time, or that's yeah. the lower fraction, four fifths of the time. Mm-hmm. No, I, I I completely understand and I agree with that. Yeah, it's 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 always fun to see like these kind of different ideas when it comes to catching, because mm-hmm. a lot of times it is such a brutal position. Like you, that's are true, and that's the the hell out of you. Like and, you don't see a lot of platoons at shortstop, right? Yeah. You you let the guy sink or swim. You let Anthony Volpe or Mason win or uh, Tovar. You just. Yeah, you, you throw him out there yeah. every single day because he's so important to your defense. Catcher, it's a, a more taxing, so you can't play the guy every day. Um, Which I find I find really funny that same idea. Most of the time when you see platoons are in the outfield and that catcher. In the outfield, yeah. it's because one person can't hit one side of the play. It, it, in catcher, mm-hmm. it's because you need time to heal. Yeah. That, I've been a catcher for a long, long time. And I got to tell you, my knees still haven't recovered. I remember for – yeah. <laughs> I remember for a brief period of time in Little League, I thought I wanted to be a catcher. And then I tried catching, mm. and I never wanted to do it again for a reason. I, one of the <laughs> it's same tough. Races for me was I was a catcher for a very, very long time. And then we got another catcher on the team uh, who was, I'll admit, he was better than me. And then they moved me over to first base, and I was a defense wizard at first base. So they're like, all right, now this is a happy accident. This is fun. We got the Evan White over here. 
Yeah. Um, Mac, what's your player comp? Your your baseball player comp? Uh, like my my baseball player comp, uh, Darren O'Day. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Hey, no, that's fair. That is a good point. Uh, I would uh, say mine is uh, Joe Creedy. One time all nice. Joe Creedy. Yeah, Silver Slugger very over Alex defensive. Rodriguez for some unknown reason, but very very you know, good defensive third baseman. A World Series champion, by the way, too. Yes. Yeah, no, 100% on that. So, Alex, I hear you have an extra special segment for us. I do. It is I'll time. Give you the Once again, for It's Not Just a Boulder, it is the Boulder Collegians here. And, oh, hello. There we go. I was about there to say, go. like, all right, am I on for this? Yeah. Um, it has been a very interesting week for the Collegians. And I say that because a lot has happened. And not all for the best. They, they had their final series against the Arvada Elites here and took, they needed both games in order to win the league, and they won one of them. They won the first game. The second game was, in my personal opinion, they had a lot of errors in the game, and it was a bit, quite a bit sloppy overall. But the game of their, their best ended up losing at 17 to 15. And I'm be, I've been given word that more than likely the season is over. They are going to. They had a game again, uh, two games against the Mile High Travelers on. It was supposed to be for Monday. However, the games were canceled due to a lack of pitching. And there's one more Lumberjacks game that needed to be made up. Although I'm being told that more than likely it will not be. So that means I have now called the last of my games with the Boulder Collegians more than likely. Uh, they're still going to make a trip down to Wichita. I will not be traveling uh, with them due to number of reasons but i wanted to spend just a moment here talking about some of the players on the team and some of the guys that have really shelled out as well as the team itself first and foremost the name i want to bring up is one diego castellanos who uh will be famous for a lot of things but one that will be swearing on air when i interviewed him but that was fun it was it was funny it was a good bit he did the uh whole uh, the whole jp crawford spot i will not be repeating the word said though but he had, in my opinion, one of the most impressive offensive seasons I've seen from a hitter. He was five points shy of batting 500 here while leading the team in RBIs, leading the team in OPS here from of qualified hitter, hitters, I should say. You know, Sluggy 629 and on base percentage just shy of 600. And. 43 RBIs. To give you kind of an idea how big that is, the next closest RBI total to him was 34. He had nine more RBIs than the next guy after him. He was an absolute master at the plate, but also played tremendous defense. Uh, for St. Mary's College of California, he is going to be a hell of a ball player. Uh, also, guys, Derek Woolwine became a walking madman after walking seven times in one series of two games. Uh, where at one point he walked four times in a row. Absolutely incredible. I interviewed him after the game. And at the next at-bat after that seventh walk, first pitch swung, got a single. And I asked him, he was like, were you just trying to hit something? He goes, dude, I could not get a pitch to hit. Finally, I did, and I took advantage. So, you know, I respect him. Plus, one of the most steady defensive first basemen out there, he played excellent first base all season long. And whenever he wasn't there at first, it always felt like, there was a hole in the defense. Um, Brett Williams became a catcher that was a true, a true clubhouse guy and a true leader on the team. Where he he showed through example. He was the one that really worked on taking your pitch, driving it the other way, or getting into the gap for a base hit or an extra base hit. Got a couple homers as well for him on the season, but again had a batting average not too far off of five hundred. And in this kind of league against other co collegiate athletes, that's a pretty impressive overall. Luke Blackman had a lot of power here from as well. He was able to slug the ball pretty well as well. And here you are, an amazing defensive shortstop that I can't wait to see what he does in other levels. Shane Crow is a catcher that now has a secondary in the infield after not playing second base at all, all in his entire life got thrust into being the second baseman for the team for the basically the entire second half with injuries to the team. So his ability to keep going was awesome. On the pitching side of things, you had some incredible pitchers, such as Nolan Archuleta, who 
was so good at throwing strikes. He it seemed like he was never behind an account. He had finished with 18 strikeouts on the team, but he was he had a uh, lowest ERA on the team of qualified uh, players with an ERA. Well, one of the lowest years, not the absolute, of 2.6, but he had a zero ERA for over half of the season. TJ Newman was the definition of like a Greg Maddox type of pitcher. He did not throw hard, but he could, he had absolute command over every single one of his pitches and was able to go deep into nearly every ball game without throwing a whole lot of pitches overall. He finished the season in ERA of under two. Then guys like Nick Billums, who had a great fastball, Caden Calcao, who really found his stride halfway through the season and became a true dominant pitch for the team. And I obviously have to talk about CJ Pino, the, the basically the de, de facto closer for the team, but he was the high leverage guy that was always brought in whenever they really needed to stop the bleeding. And he did absolutely just that. This team has been so much fun to call. Also, I, I got to give a couple other mini shout outs there too, as well. Um, Alec Martinez did a great job as one of the true two-way players on the team. About to mention Nick Mishuk as one of the better uh, lefty relievers that once he found his way throwing strikes, was absolutely great. So regardless, with all that being said, they finished their season right now, a record of 29 and five, an absolute stellar record. The team played some great baseball. There's They definitely had a big issue when it came to injury. And that was something that plagued them all season long. They had really had to mix and match lineups that it cost them a few games here and there, but they played hard. They played extremely, extremely strong. And I am so very proud that I got to call them over the course of this season. This has been so much fun to get to work with these guys as they continue to progress on their careers. And all these guys have got some great careers ahead of them. Uh, oh, one name I, Definitely can't forget to mention is uh, Isaac Sobieszczak, who is one of the strongest like humans I've ever seen. Him hitting a bit. I got to hit batting practice with, uh, with the team before the last games, and I've been trying to do that all season. But I was uh, right next to him in the cage, and listening to the ball explode off of his bat, it sounded different. He was so dang strong. Um. But this team has got a bright future between everyone. I'm so happy for me getting to meet everyone that I did, meeting all the families that I got to meet throughout the entire season, working with these players, working with management, working with the coaches. Um, yeah, I honestly feel sad that my time with the Collegians has come to its end. And for that purpose, um, I was very humbled when uh, I was presented with a team photo that everyone signed saying, thank you, Alex. And more than likely, I, I hear that they are going to go play in Wichita. So maybe we might have one last uh, Boulder segment uh, before retiring it overall. But I want to thank you all for paying attention and listening to me talk about the collegians over the last several weeks. Uh, I love the fact that I've gotten to talk about this team and their exploits over the course of an entire season long. <laughs> Sounds like that was a phenomenal time, Alex. So <clears throat> we yeah, appreciate sure. the the. It's not just a Boulder; it's the Boulder Boulder Collegians updates. Um, so Definitely. they'll be missed. Uh, potentially, they'll be missed. <laughs> I mean, they will be missed when we are eventually done. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I know, yeah. I know what you mean. I know. What yes. You mean. Okay. Um, well, that was a pretty clunky transition. Do you already? Oh, oh my goodness! Are you ready for an even clunkier one? Yeah, the one that's happening at this. Yeah, it's trivia time. Yourself. Yeah, woo. Yeah, class, trivia. Class. Yeah, 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 let's go. Okay. Uh, we have another episode of the Mac and Alex Cup. Today we have our home run derby themed. Oh, let's go trivia. Real quick, so, can I say one thing about trivia? <laughs> okay, Alex. I saw a post on Twitter that just made me bust out laughing. Uh, the original tweet said, uh, "Get yourself a." Uh, I was like, "There's nothing sexier than a man who locks the hell in during trivia." Oh, and yeah. the re first response to that was James Holzhauer showing his wing oh. percentage for Jeopardy. I'm like, Dude. you know what? That's fair. That's a fair point. Yeah. That's the goat right there. 
True. All right. Today we are throwing it back to a segment I like, Who Am I? Uh, but with Home Run Derby contestants. So rest in peace, Howie Schwab. Here we are. Mac and Alex, I would like uh, Mac, pick a number between one and ten. Uh, seven. Alex. Six. Alex, the number was three. You may oh. choose a uh, a topic between uh, between one and eight. Okay, let's go with seven. Okay, so you get number seven. There are five clues. You will get the first one here. Mac will get the second one, and you'll alternate. You will get the last clue, though. Uh, depending on how early you answer, that's the number of points you get. So if you get it on the first clue... You get five points. If you get it on the last clue, you get one. If you get it wrong, the other person gets to go. You may also pass instead of guessing. So if you get one guess. Okay, only so, one guess. Gotcha. So one here, are you ready? Yes. All right. This 2014 All-Star went 0 for in the Derby. Oh, I'm going to answer on this one. I believe that's Robinson Cano. Uh, yeah. That is not the answer I'm looking for. Oh, okay. Mac. Later, this player played for both teams in one state in the same season. Oh, man. Um, am I supposed to just guess now? or do You I... can pass. Well, if you uh, pass, then you just keep going down the Yeah, you, you would keep going. You can just ask for the next yeah. clue. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to pass. Okay. He notably did not play for the Atlanta Braves. <laughs> oh. oh, I know the answer then. Oh, okay. God, I should have gotten this on clue one. Yasiel Puig. Yasiel Puig, That's right. COVID legend, him. is I correct. I go over in the Derby. Wow. Yes. Okay, that is correct. Mac, you lead 3-0. I mean, I, mean I, I I think my guess was still valid. <laughs> you know, I, That's true. Yeah, Robinson Cano has gone over in the Home Run Derby. I also saw him get last in the 2013 Home Run Derby. But, uh, Didn't he go over hmm. the year that he was the captain? Yep, 2012. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oof. All right, Mac, one through eight, just don't choose seven. Okay, I'll choose four then. All right, number four. This 1999 All-Star hit two home runs in the Derby. Pass. Okay, Alex, this lifelong National Leaguer was a premier five-tool player. Pass. Mac, he had previously been in the Derby with Montreal. Mm. Mm. Man, I'm going to have to pass. Okay, Alex, he retired with the Cardinals. Oh, my God. Um, I, oh my. There's only one more clue left, so I think I have yes. to guess on this, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Um, an yeah, guessing retired. doesn't hurt you here. Yeah. He was an expo retired with the Cardinals. Uh, I'm going to say, well, that's not right. Uh, screw it, Vladdy. I don't know. <laughs> okay. It is not Vladdy. Yes. Vladdy Mac? played for the Angels. I know. I'm a little bit. I couldn't think yeah. of the answer. Okay. I didn't want to drive this uh, any longer. All right, Mac? I, I know who the answer is, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Oh, uh, What's less but here, give, give the clue anyway. Right. And then, uh, name yes. this Coors merchant who foolish baseball helped get into the hall of fame. Larry, Larry Walker. Yeah. As you know, I, <laughs> wow. he was on the, the tip of my tongue after the third clue. Mm -hmm. And then when he said he retired with the Cardinals, I knew right away. And I'm like, wow, I should have gotten that already. Uh, I do want to throw it out there. My final two clues for Yasio Pui clue four. he famously licked his bat and five name yes. this former Dodgers sensation. I was going to okay. say, what you needed to say that he got pulled over while wearing pink booty shorts. I do not recall that. Uh, I will take I it. Not. It is the funniest Alex. Thing. Hello. Back on topic, pal. One. one to eight. Pick a number. One. Okay, number oh. one. This 1989 All-Star hit only one home run in the Derby. Pass. <laughs> Mac. He hit a leadoff home run in the All-Star game. Okay, I know the answer. I believe this is Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson is correct. Bo knows the All-Star game. Bo I knows. forgot he was in the Home Run Derby. Uh, Mac leads 8-0. The final clues. His only black text 
1989 American League strikeout leader. He played for the Royals, White Sox, and Angels. Name this former NFL running back. All right, Mac, you choose the topic. One to eight. Uh, I'll take n- – no, wait, what numbers are available again? Uh, wait, we, we've taken – You've one, taken one, one four, and seven. seven. Have been taken, so. I'm going to take five. Okay, five. This 2004 All Star hit three home runs in the Derby. Pass. Alex, he was an All Star twice and received MVP votes once. Pass. Mac, he last played for the Rays. Last played for the Rays? Uh, he was a two time All Star. Uh, I'm going to have to pass. Alex, in 2023, he was a one-season wonder for us at LAR and the subject of a, a certain Matthias Altman Kurosaki article. Oh, God. I'm so mad right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dang, I don't read your writing. Oh, my God, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> why would i read max writing it's weird <laughs> i don't know the only writing you good all good writing you do is the closer entrances one <laughs> exactly it's that the, is a valid that point that's his best cool. work but i'm, I'm kidding i'm kidding you do a lot <laughs> um uh, 2023 was a merchant i don't know pass man just say the oh my god I, clue. I name the former Rangers third baseman. Hank Blaylock. I I oh did not God. know he was in the home run derby, but it makes sense. All right. Alex, please Hello. choose a number between one and eight. Two. All right. Two. This 1992 All-Star hit four home runs in the derby. Pass. <laughs> Mac, despite being the third place finisher in MVP that season, he was traded that offseason. Pass. Alex, the team he was traded to, he won a World Series with them. What year did you say this was again? The Derby was in 92. Derby was in 92. All right, this is, I, I, oh no, that's not even close. Are you passing? Pass. Yeah. Okay. Mac, he was top three in MVP voting for three different teams. Ooh, uh, you know, I'm just going to take a guess here. I think this is Fred McGriff. It is not Fred McGriff. Oh, Alex, man. name this member of the 500 home run club that you could play with an MLB power pros. Um, uh, Frank Thomas. It is Gary Sheffield. Oh. oh, he was on the Padres, got shipped off to the Marlins, won a World Series with them in 97, was top three in MVP voting uh, with the Yankees and Bravos. Fair enough. Right. All right. Max. So, Mac, you lead nine nothing. Uh, and you're on the board here three, six, or eight. Uh, let's go with eight. All right, eight. This 2018 All Star hit 16 home runs in the Derby, but lost in the first round. Uh, I'm going to pass here, but okay, Alex. This player sent no more fielders to to therapy in a 2024 YouTube video. Pass. Mac. He is often depicted striking out against poor ceremonial first pitches. Oh, wait! This guy was in the home run derby. Oh my God! Uh, this is Javier Baez. Yeah, <laughs> it is Javier that Baez. Was, that's a Javi really Gaia good clue. I like that one. If I and had I com- that one before, I would have been like, "Oh, I know exactly." I is. completely forgot that he was in the Derby. I know that he was great that year, but yes, he was. Yeah, he was uh, on the cover. Really Session and MVPs that year. Remember Sorry, twenty. Rooms. Twenty. Yeah, twenty. All right, Alex. You right, get either six. six or three, and uh, Mac has secured the win. But I want to read these clues because I thought yeah. they were funny. 100 percent. Yeah, I need to get at least one point. Three or six. I said six. Okay, six. This 2007 All Star hit two home runs in the Derby. Pass. Mac, 
his previous team went to the World Series the next season after he left in free agency. Two thousand seven, uh, pass. Okay, Alex. He was a lifetime three hundred nine hitter. Okay, so I want to clarify something about the last clue, right? Yes. So in he in was it the two thousand seven off season he got traded? No. Then before the two thousand no he le- uh, he left in free agency. Key distinction: he left in free agency was not a trade. Okay. But it was that he, year, though. No, it was not that year. the oh. The team he was on, he he competed in the home run derby for X team, X minus one team, won the World Series the year after he left. Okay. Lifetime three hundred nine hitter pass. Okay, Mac. He helped his team march to the World Series with a walk off. Oh, I I. I think I know the answer. Well, your time to um, guess. I I think this is Maglio Ordonez. That is correct. Uh, Alex, that's an I iconic call. The, so yes, uh, Alex, name the 2007 American League batting champion and A level contact bat. I was about to say this. You got to have the 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 A contact, A power, A trajectory. <laughs> All right, the last last one here, Mac. Can you go for the clean sweep? The shutout. This 1997 All Star went over in the Derby. All right, pass. <laughs> Alex, he was traded by a World Series winner in this season. They won that World Series. Pass. Mac, he was playable in MLB Power Pros 2008. Um, I'm I'm gonna have to pass here because I don't know what team he was on. <laughs> right, Alex. He married a women's World Cup winner. Oh God! I think I have to guess on this. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. Um, A-Rod. I think I know the answer. A Rod. Mac, name Boston's version of Derek Jeter. Exactly, Nomar Garcia Parra. You know, as soon as he said, because I know that he was he married Mia Hamm. Yes. So, yeah. All right, cool. I guess what? Okay. Wow. Uh, a solid 15 to nothing out. there. Um, Mac, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Splash. Uh, rest in peace, my cardboard with all my uh, questions. Honestly, I, respect, I mean, that's, I respect, I respect the hustle there. That's yeah, yeah, definitely. very detailed. Uh, my, my bosses at the grocery store probably don't, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. uh, I, I thought that was enjoyable. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, I, li- I liked no, it. No, no, no. That was fun. I just. Uh, and not just because I won, but because <laughs> yeah. I thought that was very well put together. No, I agree. I think I think the idea that was really fun. Um, legitimately, there are a few of the clues I would have gotten if they were like one earlier. Like the Javi Baez one, I would have immediately gotten if the second clue was just he's frequently depicted striking out to back first pitches. I would have known that yeah. immediately. The but, sister oh, yeah, Jean one. Sister Jean, yeah. Uh, also, shout out no more fielders, the go and shout out foolish baseball. True. Um Legit, right. I still think my favorite one of that is still the either the sister Jean for the hobby bad strikeout or yeah. uh the 50 cent. Yes. One. 50 cent, yes. Yes. So when I threw out it, when I threw out my first pitch with the collegians, I said my one goal is I did not want to 50 cent it. Oof, yeah. yeah. And I had threw a strike, so we take those. Yeah. All right. Uh who would like to go first with our time to ourselves? I'm down. Let's do this. All right, Alex in Trace Dos Uno. So kind of piggybacking off of what I said during the collegian segments, um, this summer has been legitimately one of the best of my life. And I am so happy that I got to spend the time with these great ball players, with this great organization. It has been so much fun to get to call baseball again. They really reinvigorated my love of play by play, get, letting me, me really just shine with whoever I wanted to be on the mic letting me really get to work on my own craft while getting to be the absolute best that I felt like I could be. And it feels really weird that it's done. That's more than likely done. I'm hoping that right now I'm going to be moving on to, to quote the Sandlot, bigger and better games. But at the same time, like 
this entire season has been so momentous for me. And I'm so, so happy that I got to take part in this. Um, I, I'm going to record something a little bit later here for the fans of the Boulder Collegians here as saying basically my way of saying thank you to the fans for all that. But um, I'm not going to be done with broadcasting. I refuse to be done with it. But this entire summer has been so, so, so much fun. And I would not trade it for a world. I was scared as, I was scared as hell coming in here. And now I'm just sad that it's over. Yeah, powerful stuff there, Alex. <clears throat> All right, Mac, would you like to go or would you like me to go? Uh, you can go. I'm still gathering right. thoughts. All right. Count me down. Three, two, one. Rest in peace, Jacoby Jones. There's always a, a weird, weird feeling as a sports fan when one of your favorite players in the league joins your team. And sometimes it doesn't go well. And then sometimes the player helps you win a Super Bowl. And Jacoby Jones was one of my favorite players in football, even before he joined the Ravens. When he was in Houston, just as a kick, kick returner, punt returner type, you know, third wide receiver, fourth wide receiver. I love those guys. Like, love the Leon Washingtons of the world. Love the Devin Duvernays now, the modern ilk. Love the Jamal Agnews of the world. That's just like my guy, right? Mar Marcus Sherrill's old uh, Vikings corner and kick returner. That's my guy. Devin Hester, Cordero Patterson. And Jacoby Jones was my guy. He was my kick returner. He was my, you know, return specialist. He's my Super Bowl hero. In, on in all honesty, my Super Bowl MVP. Sorry, Joe Flacco. And it sucks to see a great guy, a great Raven, a great man, um, die so young and, um, rest in peace, Jacoby Jones. Uh, my condolences to his family. Uh, my condolences to the, the Ravens family, the Ravens flock. Um, another untimely death. I saw a clip of, uh, Jalen Ferguson and Jacoby Jones at a preseason game from a couple years ago. And that just, it sucks that <clears throat> someone's son died at 40. Someone's um so. rest in peace also Steelers legend for Mac so rest in peace yeah I was really sad rest in peace to Kobe Jones um sure. like Splash said gone far too soon only 40 years old um yeah all right uh I guess it's my time yep. uh somebody uh, count me down sure three two one all right, I just need to talk about Pete Alonso for a second because uh, I understand um, if you're frustrated, if you're a Mets fan, you are frustrated with the way he's played this year. He has not played up to par, uh, and it is a contract year. But uh, of all things, for people to dunk on him about uh, the Home Run Derby, in my opinion, is not one of them. Um, the Home Run Derby is a fun event that he loves to, to take part in. It's just him being himself. Uh, and having a good time. And yes, you could say he takes it seriously or whatever, but I mean, he's a professional athlete, breaking news guys. Everyone has something that they, they want to win. Everyone loves winning. Uh, everyone has an ego. Okay. Uh, so I think, you know, the fact that like everyone, including Mets fans, for some reason want to dunk on this guy is kind of ridiculous. Uh, from what I understand, he's very good off the field uh, with the community. I mean, heck he was in this to try to, help youth baseball leagues. Uh, so I understand if you're frustrated with his on-field performance and all that, but I think there's, you know, there are reasons to be frustrated with him, but I thought that this past week the hate was overdone. I also think his struggles have been exaggerated this year because of its, because of his contract. But uh, I just want to say, uh, I think we all need to back off this guy a little bit because it's, it's getting a little ridiculous. Yeah, no, I completely get that. <sighs> yeah, yeah, like I was gonna, um, I was going to point out that the Alonso thing kind of is sort of backfires when he's, with all due respect to Pete Alonso, he's a great baseball player, did not deserve to be an All Star this year, so it no, kind of backfires. I, under when he's, I understand that. Oh yes. yeah, he's going to be in the home run derby, so he has to be an All Star. That entirely backfired. 
right? And it wasn't a yeah. Julio Rodriguez beating him with 40 home runs. It was a he stunk. It, just on that day. Yeah, he didn't do well. Yeah. He wasn't a, exactly. actually he was fine. The uh um the pitcher. freaking pitcher. Dave Dave, J- Dave Jouse had a bad bad Yeah, it was, it was not his night. It was not his night. Um so it happens. Um now it's weird that Pete Alonso has as many all-star game appearances as Jeff Bagwell. Um, <laughs> and Rafael Palmero. Yeah, and Rafael Palmero. That is a problem, I, with all due respect. Yeah. Like, one's a Hall of Famer and one's in his uh, sixth full season, or fifth if you want to throw out the COVID year because he couldn't be an all-star in that year. So, I, I don't know. I, it just kind of – I think Major League Baseball ended up with egg on their face. I think Lindor, mm-hmm. Nimmo, Christian Walker – I know you needed a Met in there, but if you replace the first baseman, you get Christian Walker. There were multiple Mets more to serving, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, anyways, that will wrap us up for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, drop a five-star review, Apple Podcast, drop a like on YouTube, drop a comment. What's your favorite segment? Do you like the trivia? Do you like the Boulder Collegians? Do you want Alex to do that with another team? Um, do you want Mac to do it with, like, the Syracuse Mets? I don't know. Uh, make sure you drop us a follow at LAR underscore baseball on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you have, we're on YouTube, we're on Apple, we're on Spotify, wherever you get the podcast. If you don't like the show, uh, you can email us at replacement at gmail.com. Let us know what we should improve upon. Don't give us a one-star review, but we appreciate the thoughts. So anyways, for Alex, for Mac, and for myself, we will see you soon. And remember, folks, Spencer Schwellenbach will be a starting pitcher tomorrow. Not tomorrow, next year. Two to lose.